Hey guys, so today I want to make a video disproving Christianity. By far, the biggest question that I get from people is asking me to prove to them that there's no God, which is an impossible thing to ask for somebody to do because it's impossible to disprove a negative. Um, I, I can't tell you that there's no God for sure. I can't prove to you that there's no fairies. I can't prove to you that there's not a flying spaghetti monster, etc. You get my point. Um, but what I feel like I can do is I have a mountain of evidence against the Christian version of God and Christianity. And that's what I'm going to try to present to you in this video. I'm going to do it in the nicest way that I possibly can without being condescending or anything like that because I feel like this is something that I want more people to be able to see. I feel like people who are Christian should be able to watch this video with an open mind and process what I'm saying without automatically shutting off the video. A lot of times whenever I make videos, I, I tend to I preach to the choir in a sense, but I'm also trying to get those people who are kind of thinking about it, who are on the border and they don't know which way to go, and I'm kind of just throwing information at them to get them to be like, oh well, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but this video I want to kind of aim at everyone, um, Christians, non-Christians, people on the fence, everyone, so that you guys can get an idea of where I'm coming from and why I'm not a Christian anymore. And a lot of it is just the same reasons. I mean, I have a whole list of things that I've, I've written out here, and like I said, I want to make this a nice video. Um, but first of all, you know, you can't prove that there's no God, like I said, you can't prove that there's no fairies, but people have also asked me to prove that atheism is true. Now, first of all, I want to clarify really quick that atheism is not a religion, it's the lack of a religion. And unfortunately, people who are atheists have to be put in a category based off of other people's beliefs. You know, like I'm also an a-fairyist. Um, I'm also, you know, I just an a-monsterist. I just, I don't believe in things that are supernatural. Uh, so uh, that, I'm just, I'm a everything, I suppose. I mean, everyone is technically, this is a famous quote, everyone's technically an atheist um, for every other religion except for their own. Like, why don't you believe in Zeus? Why don't you believe in Thor? Why don't you believe in, you know, flying spaghetti monster, etc.? I mean, people don't believe in any other religion except for their own, so atheists are said to just take it one step further. That's kind of a, a popular saying among people who are non-religious. Now, when a lot of people make videos like this, they try to disprove Christianity by pointing out all the negative things that they see in the Bible. Like they point out the bigotry and the hate and the misogyny and quotes about hom homosexuals are, you know, the worst thing ever and how, you know, rape is okay. And they point out all these terrible things in the Bible. Um, and then, you know, that's often countered by Christians by saying, well, there's also a lot of good things in the Bible, uh, but they like to cherry pick and they don't focus on the contradictions. They don't focus on the negative things because they say Jesus is there and Jesus is good and the Old Testament isn't so relevant. But the thing is, is that Jesus verifies everything in the Old Testament. And also there's no such thing as hell really until you get to the New Testament. So everybody who sits there and says that the New Testament is this like warm and fuzzy thing, it's not necessarily true because that's where hell kind of started and that's not the most you know, maybe warm, but not exactly fuzzy thing that I could think of. So I'm not going to focus on things like that, but what I do want to point out, and I'm sure a lot of people know this already, and I'm not going to be, uh, you know, condescending or belittle you because I know that you guys are intelligent, you already know that there's a number of contradictions in the Bible, and to sit here and go through all of them would be an impossible feat. Like, I would be here all day, I don't think I could make a video long enough to go through the entire Bible and point out every single thing that's contradictory. Um, but you guys can go ahead and Google that on your own because, I mean, you just type it in Google, a billion things will come up. But one thing I do want to point out, it's not so much a contradiction, it's just something in the Bible that's just bizarre. There are different points in there where it references a flat earth. They say that the earth is flat, um, and they also make references to the, the earth being the center of the universe where other planets would revolve around the earth. And we obviously know that that's not true. And the reason why I want to point that out is because it clearly demonstrates that the Bible was written by people that are influenced by the biases of the time period that they lived in. That's what they thought was true, so that's what they put in the Bible. If you look at the period of when the Bible was written and the period of when modern science began, they're so far apart that there's no way that modern science could be in the Bible unless it was, you know, divine, and we obviously know that that is not the case. It's not in the Bible. Um, and you can't have expected those people to know that kind of thing, but that to me is just one thing that kind of points to the fact that the Bible was written by people who didn't know that, that I, don't, I don't feel like it was divinely inspired, otherwise they wouldn't have put things like the earth is flat or that the other planets revolve around the Earth. To me, that's ridiculous, and just it's just one of many things that you can look at to point to a flaw in the Bible. But anyways, like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the Bible specificities, because a lot of people who are Christians say that they do away with the specificities. They don't need, you know, certain aspects of the Bible to believe in the core of Christianity, which is, you know, God and Jesus and the Trinity, because that's what they feel defines them as a Christian, that they believe in Jesus, that he is the Savior, and they believe in God, and that's all that they need um, to be a Christian. And 
I would like to spend the most of this video focusing on that and talking about the story of Jesus and why I don't believe it. And it's not that I don't think that there was a man named Jesus that existed. That could have been very well, you know, that, that's fine. That has nothing to do with my point. The point is that if you, um, if you look at history, there are so many stories, mythological stories, um, before Jesus that had almost the same exact storyline that he had. There's stories of several different gods that were born of a virgin, that were human yet divine. Their father was even a carpenter, but their real father was God. They were brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh by wise men on their birthday, December 25th, which is the winter solstice. They all had that in common. They were the savior, the messiah, the way, the truth, the light. They brought salvation to people. They died as a martyr, some even on a cross, and rose from the dead, ascended into heaven. And that story is not unique to Jesus. In fact, it's almost entirely plagiarized by mythologies before him. And that's what I want to go through in this video. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going through three or four different gods that have almost the same exact characteristics as Jesus. This is something that whenever I found out, the, the details of this was completely shocking to me. I felt pissed. I felt like I had been tricked my whole life and it was it was kind of um, the, the straw that broke the camel's back kind of saying it, it was the last straw for me like I, I after seeing all the similarities between Jesus and God's before him it was like what what is the point of believing any of it anymore it just that's just how I feel so the first God I want to go over is Horus it was a God that was written about in the Egyptian Book of the Dead in 1280 BC and here are some of the similarities first of all he was a son of God some people disagree whether or not he was born of a virgin but that's in some stories of him he was baptized in a river he was tempted in the desert he healed the sick cured the blind cast out demons walked on water he raised someone named Asar A-S-A-R from the dead and that actually literally translate to Lazarus he had 12 disciples he was crucified and rose from the dead three days later but that's just a few things they didn't have that much in common but anyways the next god I want to talk to you about is Krishna here are a few things that they had in common both the son of God both sent from heaven to earth in the form of a man both called the savior the second person of the Trinity. His adoptive father was a human and a carpenter. Both were visited at birth by wise men and shepherds, guided by a star. Both were without sin. They were both God-men, both being human and divine. Both performed many miracles, including healing disease, one of them being making a leper whole. Both cast out indwelling demons and raised the dead. Both selected disciples to spread his teachings. Both were meek and merciful. Both were criticized for associating with sinners. Both celebrated a last supper. Both forgave his enemies. Both descended into hell and were resurrected. Many people witnessed their ascensions into heaven. And that brings me to the last god, Mithra. Mithras was a Roman god. He was the savior. He was sent to earth to live as a mortal. He died for our sins so that sinners could have everlasting life. But of course, he was resurrected from the dead. He was born from a virgin on December 25th. And guess what? He was born in a manger with lots of shepherds and they referred to him as the light of the world. He also had 12 disciples and they also had a last supper before he died. The people who used to worship this god would have symbolic meals of his flesh and blood. Pictures of him often depicted a halo around his head and HQ was, guess what, on the Vatican Hill in Rome. Now, a lot of different religious scholars will debate certain aspects of these different gods and say, well, that wasn't true and that wasn't true, but you can't begin to debate them all. You can't say that there's no credibility for any of them being historically accurate and historically accurate as saying that's how the people viewed that particular god. There, you can't dispute every single claim. The point is, is these three gods had so much in common with the story of Jesus. All came before him. And it seems like nobody knows about this. I didn't know about it until quite recently, whenever I started researching religion and it became interesting to me. And it just boggles my mind that, that there's so many similarities, but people will just dismiss it and ignore it. Ignore contradictions in the Bible, fine. Ignore different things in the Bible that seem out of time, that people were biased by, you know, their ignorance of science at that time when they wrote it. Ignore that, fine. But ignoring this, it, it seems like Christianity was so clearly plagiarized by different mythologies that came before it. How could you possibly credit it as being original and believe it completely? I just, it just makes no sense to me and I really wanted to make this video you could probably sit there and say that I'm not necessarily disproving Christianity, but given all of that evidence, everything that it has told you, if, if you still think that it is 100% true, 
then there's there's nothing else I could possibly say to convince you otherwise. But just as far as what I said in this video, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm really curious to get your feedback on everything that I said. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, favorite it, share it everywhere. Um, seriously, share it. I know that this is a, a very touchy subject for a lot of people, but I feel like I presented it in the nicest way that I possibly could, hoping that people who were afraid to share my stuff before would be able to at least share this one because I kept it PG, I try to be respectful, I just laid out the evidence, and it's something that I think people need to hear. So yeah, share it. Um, and all my other social networks are also in the description on my Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, all that stuff. Follow me everywhere. Okay, that's enough shameless self-promotion. I'm done. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.